Cosby's lawyer says that this fight is not over when it's clearly obvious to me that in fact this fight is indeed over. Bill Cosby is guilty and is probably going to spend the rest of his life in a jail cell or a prison cell or whatever. Either way, he's still going to die and the victims that he fucked over got the justice that they needed and that's that. I mean, who cares, man? Nobody gives a shit about Bill Cosby. <laughs> so according to Fox News, Bill Cosby, the 80-year-old comedian best known for his stint as Fat Albert and The Cosby Show, is facing up to 30 years in prison for three counts of molestation each of which carry up to 10 years apiece. Now, I'm not going to tell you why, but this is according to Fox News, which, by the way, is my favorite news channel, and also the one channel of all the other channels that I consider to be the only one that's credible. Of course, you can understand why that is, since CNN, MSNBC, CNBC, and CNN are always full of shit because they force you to believe things that you don't need to believe. So, there you go. Kidding me? The answer, my dear Kevin, is a big fat resounding no! And don't you forget that. Emma, please step aside. I've got an episode to run here. Are you fucking kidding me? The answer, my dear Kevin, is a big fat resounding no! And don't you forget that. Emma, please step aside. I've got an episode to run here. Ah, shit. Five reasons as to why Roman Reigns will never be a god. Not in a million years, not in a billion years, not in a trillion years. Ever. Let's get started, shall we? First of all, claim that Roman Reigns was the only one to defeat The Undertaker at Wrestlemania is null and void because Brock Lesnar did that three years before that. So he was the one that did it first. And you wonder why everything's going to hell because the internet fan base of Roman Reigns is clearly oblivious to this fact because they refuse to accept it. Number four, Roman Reigns is a paper champion. Roman Reigns, as you all know, and I personally respect the guy as much as anyone else, is a Grand Slam champion in WWE who has been given title after title, reign after reign, hence the name Roman Reigns because they want him to live up to that moniker, and very rightly so, but for all the wrong reasons. Number three, he is kin to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, which bears mentioning his fixed 2015 Royal Rumble win from three years before, when he went to challenge Brock Lesnar in their first encounter at WrestleMania in 2015, which ended, of course, with Seth Rollins doing the unthinkable and cashing in money in the bank on Roman Reigns, the challenger, and not Brock Lesnar, the champion, to become the new champion. They had three years after that to push the guy, but the only excuse they could come up with is that The Rock is his cousin, 
and for that, he should be considered as the guy. Number two, Roman Reigns is Romos, if I'm even allowed to call them that. Roman Reigns' promos are mediocre at best. The only reason as to why Roman Reigns is the guy is because he has a very, very strictly limited move set, the spear, the Superman punch, and so on. And on top of all that, his suffering Sokotash promo is cringeworthy at best. His best promos were when he was in The Shield with Reigns' tag team partners Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins who would eventually turn on him and Ambrose, effectively ending The Shield. Of course, a reuniting of The Shield wouldn't help any, as Reigns and Ambrose eventually got injured, which pretty much halted that. Since then, his promos have been very, very cringeworthy and very reminiscent of North Korea's winner and the Golden Child. And they can come up with a better storyline than WWE can for Roman Reigns. And most of all, number one, Reigns is Vince's latest fetish. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, as you know, is the chairman and CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment, who has made stars like Hulk Hogan, Bruno Sammartino, which apparently was his father's favorite man. Hulk Hogan, of course, was the OG Superman. Shawn Michaels eventually took over that role after Bret Hart from 1997 until his potentially career-ending career ending injury in 1998. And then he came back four years later and had another run which lasted a lot longer. And then Cena stepped in to become the new Superman. And now we have Reigns. Vince McMahon, of course, has had four years to promote Reigns as the guy and has failed massively, as you can clearly see by this picture. And that is five reasons as to why Roman Reigns will never be the guy unless they turn him heel. And you can tell them I said that too. <laughs> Ah, shit. Tell me this, people. Tell me this. Would you believe me if I told you that today, as of this taping, is the seventh anniversary of Osama bin Laden's death? Would you believe me if I told you that? Well, I happen to find this Wikipedia page, by God. And I happen to find it right here. Oh, you did? Yeah. You don't say. I mean, there's, 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 oh my god, that's crazy, man. What the hell? Yo, I think that was special. So, ah, shut up. The point I'm trying to make is this. Osama bin Laden was the man who supposedly was responsible for the rise of the Taliban, of Hezbollah, of ISIS, and all these other terrorist organizations. So, it figures quite a lot, I should say. And, and that's not all. You can only imagine what his name literally translates to, right? So, it figures, man. So, according to Wikipedia, Bin Laden's name is supposedly Arabic for whatever reason. Of course, Wikipedia will tell me. Uh, that's just that that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You better believe it. Okay. So what? 
What's the hell? What the hell did the damn born in this shit, man? The hell's the born in this? Would you get the fuck out of here? Yeah. Okay, okay. This man had a father named Muhammad bin Awad, a Saudi billionaire from India. His mother was from a secular middle class family based in Syria. He was born in Saudi Arabia and decided to join Pakistani wardens, I mean forces, fighting against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. Funding this force through arms, money, and fighters, and gained popularity among many parents. Forming Al Qaeda in 1988, vanished from Saudi Arabia in 92, forced to leave Sudan by the U.S. in 1906 and 1996, and declared a war against us. A series of bombings, related attacks would eventually ensue, and he was on the FBI's permanent shit list for the rest of his life. Hi, everybody! Hi, Nick. Wait, you're not Nick. Hi, I'm Marty the Dinosaur. Get the hell out of here. Hi, everybody! Oh, there you are, Nick. How are you? Bye, everybody! shot and killed, supposedly on this very day, eight or seven years ago, by the United States Naval Special Warfare Development Group, supposedly SEAL Team 6. Supposedly, Barack Obama still claims responsibility for this, even though SEAL Team 6 were actually the ones that actually killed him in the first place. So, it figures. It all figures itself out, whether you want to believe it or not. Okay, what the hell is going on here? I don't even you know the hell this is anymore. Man, this no, this is bullshit, man. You know it's not bullshit. You know it's a real thing, isn't it? Really says so on the Wikipedia. Shot by U.S. forces. Shot in the freaking head by a sniper. And that's the way it is. So I talk about how insanity is normal nowadays, but apparently I'm not always right, because there's a bunch of people out there who are way more insane than BCI. And some of these people aren't even guilty. They're innocent, and they were proven innocent. And yet, these people get locked up for whatever reason, but I'm not going to go into that now, right? The point is, 2 plus 2 equals 4 all day, all week, all year, 24-7, 365. Don't let anybody tell you different. Meanwhile, here are some very insane people who I believe are also clear examples of how to live life right. Let's check them out, shall we? I mean, I mean, seriously though. So I want to start with a man, a French high wire artist named Philippe Petit, who walked across a tightrope suspended between the World Trade Center's twin towers that stood around 200 feet apart in New York City, in New York State, in the American United States, on August the 7th, 1974. This feat was performed 1,350 feet above the ground and lasted about 45 minutes. Without a safety net and using a balancing pole, he made eight passes along the wire. Eight. The average ordinary human being can't do that. I can tell you that much. Now let's look at this guy. Swiss daredevil Freddy Knock. This guy set the world's highest tightrope record with a walk between 
two Swiss mountaintops. Jankograd, which is 15, which is basically 11,800, 11,588 feet. And these brilliance on March 20th, 2015. Why they don't name how many feet tall it is, I don't know. But during the stunt, Nock negotiated an altitude difference of 164 feet without using any safety equipment whatsoever. His feet broke the previous world record set by a man initially previously who set that record initially in 1974. Now here's what gets me. This is here's another guy. Here's another guy. This guy named Kane Peterson, a high wire artist walked a tightrope about 984 feet above the ground at Eureka Tower on September the 16th, 2015 in Melbourne, Australia. Peterson crossed the 69 foot distance twice without any safety net despite developing a leg cramp during the act. It was the highest tightrope walk ever in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, you, you don't fucking say. No shit. And now we move on to this next guy. This this guy, he's related to another guy that I'm going to be talking about later. On July the 18th, 1970, an aerialist of the name Carl Valenda, that's Valenda with a W, the W I believe is pronounced with a V, if I remember crossed the 750-foot deep Talula Gorge in Georgia on a tightrope in America. Luck, however, was not on this guy's side because when he attempted this in 1978, it would end in him failing and following, pretty much just following to his death, while attempting to, bro to walk a cable strung between two hotel towers in San Juan, Puerto Rico. This guy, I mean, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty damn cruel. Not a good way to go. Especially when you know that the odds of you dying and all this is pretty good. Meanwhile, his great-grandson, Nick Melinda, also a high water artist, has multiple Guinness records under his belt for having completed a numerous amount of acrobatic feats, becoming the first person to walk a tightrope stretched directly over Niagara Falls, crossing the U.S. side to the Canadian side, covering 1,800 feet, equivalently 550 meters, in 25 minutes. In June 2012. The next year, he went on to become the first person to cross a Grand Canyon Gorge on a wire. And that's not counting all the other achievements that he achieved and managed to accomplish, one of which I saw on TV once. So keep that in mind. And then there's this guy. This guy, a Canadian type roper named Jay Cochran set multiple records throughout his extensively long career, notably for skywalking more than 2,000 feet at a height of about 1,340 feet over the Yangtze River in China in 1995 and traversing the 1,300 feet distance from Skylon Tower to the pinnacle of the Hilton Falls View Hotel above Niagara Falls in Ontario, Canada in 2012. Now that's some pretty scary shit now, isn't it, man? Damn it, you got me for stop! Please register me! Now I gotta beat the crap out of you! Very Roman Reigns some more, shall we? Okay, WrestleMania 33 should have been the event in which they turned The Shield should have lost against Evolution at that event, 
with Roman Reigns effectively breaking up the shield and pulling a Seth Rollins before Seth Rollins could pull Seth Rollins. WrestleMania 31, they still push Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns loses. WrestleMania 32, they push Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns becomes their hand picked arrow. WrestleMania 33, they have him defeat The Undertaker and become the 2 with 24 and 2, and he's still not over. WrestleMania 34, they have him lose again in a rematch between himself and Lesnar from three years prior at this year's 34th WrestleMania. He's still not over. Greatest Royal Rumble, they have him defeat in another rematch against Lesnar which he supposedly should have won because technically his feet touched the floor first despite botching the ending, but they make Lesnar the winner because of poor officiating. He's still not over, people. Do you get it? Now it is time for the WGF Rewind! Okay, so you know that we're all responsible for the extinction of violence, right? Well, if you didn't know that, then let me give you some insight on why we're going to be responsible for the death of all the rhinos in the world. Get this. No, 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 seriously, seriously, because you, you aren't going to want to miss this. You're, you're never, ever, ever going to want to miss this. Look, listen, 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 listen. What will happen when all the rhinos are extinct? Not only will we lose the chance to witness and study these majestic but their demise could spell mobilized trouble on an epic extinction level scale because they're considered a keystone species and have a large impact on the ecosystem and without them the environment could drastically change. Without rhinos according to one study there are fewer grazing lawns since they keep other foliage from taking over. In fact when rhinos regularly die, there are nearly 20% more grazing lawns, proving they're doing far more for the environment than just watching green Another way rhinos help just by eating is by allowing other species of grass to take root by clearing the area of the dominant energy. Just, just take a look. Take a look. Take a look. And, and not only will this affect the environment, but it will also lead to a chain reaction of other extinction events regarding animals that will eventually kill off if we don't change our ways and we're going to end up killing off the gazelle we're going to end up killing off the antelope the zebra eventually the horse we're already almost killed off the tiger already and it's a snake since rhinos can be fairly since rhinos can be basically the equivalent of a human worth of food in a day, literally 175 pounds, they're doing a lot of heavy lifting, helping to clear areas and encouraging people to others. And let me tell you, let me, let me just tell you, there are a lot of animals that rely on these creatures. I'm telling you people, a lot of animals. And there are a lot of people that rely on these animals too. A lot of wildlife tourists and all these other sorts of people. I mean, seriously. And you wonder why we're in deep shit. Well, look at yourselves in the mirror. And you'll find your fucking answer! Today's episode has been brought to you by my friend, the Burning Princess, who has a project regarding the Gallus Malatar universe that's been going on for quite some time, and she's highly interested in having you aboard to help her contribute to it. If ever you need to chat with my friend, BP, and come up with some ideas for her world, just go to her DeviantArt page and send her a private note expressing your interest in her project and she will be able to negotiate something out. And with that said, it's also worthy that it's also been brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, paid publicly by shockers like you. Thanks, you. Now,